All right, let's start building our calculator app. I have created a directory here called calculator app, and it has the same structure that we've been looking at so far. We have an index.html, which links to the angular.js script, as well as the app.js script. And there's really nothing in the body except for the simple h1. App.js is currently empty, right? It's as close to a blank slate as we want to get for this exercise. And I have this page open in the browser, this index.html, and it sees, uh, you know, you can see this h1 over here. Now what I'm going to do is start building an Angular application. So I go here and start uh, this application by creating a module, right? It's angular.module, and I'm going to call this calculator app, and I have an empty array as the second argument. Uh, I'm going to save this, and now I go to the index.html, and I say ng-app equals, then I give it the name, calculator app. All right, so now I have an Angular uh, app with an ng app and angular.module. The next thing I'm going to do is create a div which is going to contain the view section of the calculator app. So I'm going to do it just below the h1 and I have a div and this is going to contain all the view elements for our calculator. So what are the view elements? We're going to need two text boxes with some space in between for the operation. So I'm going to have an input tag over here. So there are two inputs. I'm going to have a span in between, which is going to contain the space. It doesn't have anything right now, but let's fill that up later. So I have two inputs and I have a span. Now what I also need are four buttons. So I'm going to have a paragraph tag here and I'm going to create those four buttons. I'm going to have text choose operation and then I'm going to create four buttons, one for each operation, a plus, a minus, an asterisk for multiplication, and a slash for division. And I'm going to close the paragraph tag. So let's refresh this page and see this in action. So I have two text boxes. There is some space in between which is not filled, so you don't see anything. And I have four buttons for the four operations. Okay, uh, I'm also going to create one more button for the result. So I have a button over here. I have an equals. So that when you're done, you can press equals and see the result over here. Uh, I'm going to create the result text box a little bit later. But for now, this should do. These are the UI elements. And notice that what we've done here is we've created the UI elements without having to worry about the, the JavaScript. I mean, we haven't written any JavaScript code yet except for initializing the app. And uh, so let's do that now. We're going to start with a controller. This div contains all the UI, so this is actually a perfect place for us to use an ng controller. So I'm going to have an ng controller equals, let me just call it calculator CTRL. And uh, we've learned how to use the controller as syntax. So I'm going to use the controller as and uh, give it an alias called CTRL. This is probably going to be the only controller in this page. Uh, and you don't really have the problems of having multiple controllers and trying to figure out which scope is getting looked up. But still, even with just one controller, like I mentioned, this is the way to go. Always make sure you use the controller as syntax. All right, so now I have the controller as syntax over here. Now I need to create this controller. So I'm going to go to app.js. I'm going to say app.controller. And uh, the first argument is the name of the controller. The second argument is the function. So I'm going to create this function, calculator controller, which I'm going to leave as empty for now. Uh, I don't have to inject the dollar scope because I use the this reference since I'm using the controller as syntax. So I can use the this reference over here to actually get the scope. All right, so let's do that next. Now that we have a controller, what I'm gonna do next is hold on to the user input. There are a bunch of input elements over here. You have text boxes and you have buttons. 
first, I mean, let's start with the text boxes. When the user enters something in these text boxes, I want to save them as properties of the scope, right? I need to hold on to them in the scope. Now, how do I do that? You already know when it comes to text boxes, the way to hold on to them in the scope as scope properties is by using ng model. So I'm going to create ng model directives over here. ng model, I'm going to call this input one. And uh, for this ng model, you see input two. And uh, just for verification, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a couple of scriptlets over here input one. And then input two, so that I know that this is working. Of course, I need to make sure this is inside the controller div. If I put that outside, it's not going to work because this input one and input two are going to be in the controller. What I'll also need to do is since I'm using the controller as syntax, I need to have this prefix. So I need to I need to say this is ctrl dot input one, ctrl dot input two, and then the expressions are going to be the same. I need to specify the alias every time I use the scope property. All right, now let's make sure this works. I refresh the page and uh, as I type in the numbers, they do show up over here. So this is good. We have the user input in those text boxes captured as scope properties. Next, what I want to do is be able to fill in this value between them depending on what button I choose over here, right? If I click plus, I want plus to show up over here. If I click minus, I want minus to show up over here. How do I do this? In Angular, we don't directly update the view. Like we've already discussed, we always operate on the model. We always operate on the scope object and its properties. And then you link the scope properties to the view. And then once the scope property changes, the view gets updated. So rather than have these buttons trigger some kind of a function which fetches the span and updates it, what we should ideally do is have the span bound to a scope property, like selected operation. And then when these buttons are clicked, you just go and update that uh, scope property. Let's do that now. So I'm going to have an ng bind equals ctrl dot selected operation. Right now, if I were to refresh the page, let's make sure I've saved this as well. Right now, if I refresh the page, there is really nothing in selected operation, so nothing shows up, but we can populate it. How do I populate it on clicking of these buttons? I basically need to hook in an action when these buttons are clicked. Let's start with the plus, right? So when a plus is clicked, I want plus to show up over here. So what I'm gonna do is, for the plus button, I'm gonna have an ng click event which points to a method right plus button click for example right now I need to create this method in the controller so I'm gonna say this dot plus button click is going to be a function where what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the property that's backing this span. What's the property that's backing the span? It is selected operation. So when I update selected operation in this method, the button clicked calls this method. So if I were to update this dot selected operation equals, let's make this plus, right? If I were to update this, then what's gonna happen is thanks to this ng bind, the span is automatically gonna get the value plus, All right? Let's check that. Now I click plus, you see that? That automatically shows up. That's because when I click the button, ng click gets triggered, plus button call click gets triggered, and the plus button click basically calls a function which is updating the selected operation. Now, I need to do the same thing for all these other buttons. I could of course have a minus button clicked, I could have a star button clicked, a slash button clicked, I could have four different functions. But it's actually easier to just have one function and have these different buttons pass whatever the character is as a parameter, right? Let me do that now. I'm going to have this change to just button clicked, right? And uh, I accept an argument, which is the button. And uh, this dot selected operation is just going to be the button. Now, in my index.html, rather than say control that 
plus button clicked. I'm just going to call it button clicked and I'm going to pass as an argument the plus symbol. All right, let's verify that this works. So this still works like before because now this button is actually calling the button click method with a plus symbol. So plus is being set in the selected operation scope attribute. Now I can do the same thing with other buttons, just changing the button that got clicked over here. Now I can have a, a star and a slash, right? So all these different buttons call the same method, but they just pass in different symbols, different uh, operations. And in my method, I'm just taking that operation and assigning it to selected operation, which is then bound to the span. I hope this is making sense. Now if I refresh the page, and as I click these different buttons, you see the operation changes. Right? It's pretty cool. Okay, now I have three scope properties. I have the value one, the input one, input two, and then the selected operation. What I need to do next is have an event triggered for this equals button. Now I enter something, let's say one, two, three, and then I say two. Now I have selected the plus. If I were to press the equals button, what should happen is it the, there should be a function which takes this value, takes this value, and depending on the operator, it does the right operation and displays it over here. Okay? So what needs to be displayed over here? There needs to be a result property. Again, when you have to display something in the view, you need to show a scope property. So you need to set the scope property somewhere in the function and then use an ng bind to display this over here. So let's make sure that we have that scope property. I'm going to start off with saying this dot result value equals zero. I'm going to start with a zero and then in my index.html, I'm going to have a span which prints that value ctrl dot result value and this starts off being a zero okay let's say I do a one plus one now if I were to click equals what should happen is this equals but should have an ng click which calls a scope property function which basically takes these three values and prints out the result, which basically updates the result value. So let's do just that. So I'm going to have an ng click for the equals button as well. And then I'm going to have a method called compute result. And this is also going to be on the controller. So it's going to be ctrl dot compute result. Now, compute result also needs to be a method on this. So I'm going to have this dot compute result is going to be a function. And now what does this function need to do? It needs to get the two inputs, which are input one and input two, and convert them to numbers. Because right now they are text boxes, so I can actually enter anything I want. I'm going to assume that there are numbers, but essentially what we are dealing with is string here. So I need to convert them to actual number data type. So I'm going to use a function called parse float for this. So if I were to use this dot input one, I'm going to get a string. So I'm going to have a var number one equals parse float of this dot input one. So I'm basically converting the input one property of the scope that's bound to the text box. I'm using parse float to convert it to a number and I'm holding on to it in the variable number one. And I'm going to have the same thing for number two. So now I have basically converted both these numbers into actual number data type. Now all that's left to do is figure out what the selected operation is and based on that set the right value. So I'm going to do and if block over here, if selected operation is a plus, then I'm going to set the start result value as number one 
plus number two. Well, I need to do three more actually. So one is for minus, then I'm going to have a minus here. And of course, as I'm typing this, I realize that we could have also done a case over here for these three cases. Have a star, need a space here. <clears throat> if it's a slash, then I'm going to do a slash. All right, fairly simple. Now, all I'm doing is I'm updating the result value without changing the view, but since the view is already bound to result value, it is going to get automatically updated. And this is my compute result method. Okay, let's refresh this. Now I'm going to choose one plus one. And I really hope this is going to show two. And it does not. <laughs> let's see what's going on here. Uh, control dot result value. I'm going to make sure I'm setting the right value over here. Well, this is the problem. I have skipped the this. I need to make sure that when I'm referring to a variable, I'm using the this dot. So that was the problem. Now, I really hope this works after I do this. All right, so let's do this one more time. One plus one equals, hey, there you go, this works. All right, so I'm gonna try a couple more tests. Um, let me do a 10 minus one shows nine, 10 times two shows 20. Let's do a decimals, 10.2 times two. 20.4 all right this seems to work there is one thing that i haven't done here which is to do validation now if i were to enter a s d f for example and i do this i'm going to get not a number you might say this is fine it is still showing something and it's not breaking but if you want to enhance this you can of course check if whatever you're entering is actually valid numbers and you can do that in a couple of places you can do this on an ng change of the text box and make sure every character you're entering is a decimal. Or you can do this when the compute result method is called. You make sure that when you convert the inputs to floats, you get a number which is valid. All right, so this is a very, very simple calculator, which lets you add or subtract or you know do any of those simple mathematical operations. And I hope this was a good introduction to a full application development with Angular and the kind of thinking that you have to do. Again, I stress the importance of thinking differently with Angular. When we build applications, we generally tend to think about the view and how to update the view, right? In the case of Angular, you have to think from the model onwards. You have to think from the data. What's going to be the model that will drive the view and figure out how to keep the model up to date? And then when you wire in the model to the view, when you wire in the scope properties to the view, the view automatically gets updated by Angular, so you don't have to do that. So this makes development very, very simple, as you can see, and I hope you agree. This was a calculator exercise. Definitely give it a shot. And uh, as a further exercise, I definitely recommend you try out the validation pieces of this as well.